Hey fam, Sanam. It's Kieran Jot and I've made a little video in an attempt to explain some of the astrology that is going on right now till the end of the year. This epic year of 2020. Let's not forget it's the start of a new decade and what I'm going to talk about is not just the end of the year but also how this Aquarian energy will play out in the next six years. It goes on, astrology never stops the planets, it's all about the planets and the energy of those planets and where they fall in relation to the zodiac. So kicking off with the new moon tonight, that's the 14th of December in London. And actually what I found was the most interesting about this particular new moon, which also happens to be a solar eclipse, a little bit confusing because you go from the moon to the sun, you're like, what's going on? But we have a total solar eclipse. It's happening in the Southern Hemisphere, all the way from the Pacific across Argentina and ending up in Namibia at sunset, which, oh my gosh, can you imagine if you know how spectacular that would be? So, this particular new moon happens at 16.16 GMT. Now, I thought that was interesting. 16 adds up to seven. And when I looked up the meaning of seven, it's a very lucky number. And this moon falls in the sign of Sagittarius, which is also very jubilant. So there is a really lovely energy about this eclipse, this new moon eclipse. Now, it's not a regular new moon. It's not one where you would like start manifesting and figuring things out. No, this is very much the eclipse season happens twice a year. Yeah, this is nothing new. This is nothing to be surprised by. It's happening at 23 degrees and eight minutes of Sagittarius. So it's only really gonna affect you personally if it picks up very specific points in your chart anything from 22 to 24 degrees in the mutable signs. So don't have a big freak out about, oh my God, it's a place, because I think sometimes astrology can sound quite scary. But there is definitely an energy of fate about eclipses. So when you have what we call an eclipse window, so that period, because the last moon, the last lunation, was the full moon uh, in the sign of Gemini. So that was two weeks ago, and this whole window has been a case of just, we're just gonna go with the flow, yeah? Like, try and stop pushing, stop trying to make stuff happen. I'm sure, like, like everybody worked so hard this year and just keeping on, keeping on, you know? So if you've made it this far, like, give yourself a big congratulations. It's such a huge achievement. Really, honestly, I mean that from the heart. Whatever you've gone through, yeah, you're so strong. It's that, that, that soul within that just wants to keep shine, wants to keep shining, wants to keep radiating. So keep doing things for yourself, like Kundalini Yoga, to keep that light bright within very important. Sagittarius is the sign of belief and, and faith. So keep, keep the faith strong, but the energy is there. So if, if you're not feeling it, it'd be very easy to switch into that energy. That's what I'm saying, because it's available. So what else we got coming up? We have got the winter solstice on the 21st. Oh my goodness. And of course the very famous, everyone is talking about it. Jupiter Saturn conjunction in at naught degrees Aquarius. They're both entering Aquarius at the very same time on the winter solstice. This is epic. This is mega. This is huge. Okay. But it is not 
the start of the age of Aquarius. No, 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 no. But it will get very Aquarian very quickly. Jupiter and Saturn are the social planets and basically what's happening in the sky is Jupiter is undertaking Saturn. And as it undertakes Saturn, it kind of gives it a kick up, kick up the bottom, kick up the backside, it goes woof. Sounds very serious and it's been very serious for the last two, two and a half years in Capricorn. So hopefully things will lighten up a bit as Saturn and Jupiter, which have been falling Capricorn, move into Aquarius. But it's, it's not going to be an easy ride. I, uh -uh, no, unfortunately not. Because, um, so basically Saturn rules Aquarius. Yeah, so Saturn's also very strong in Aquarius as well. Now, you don't have to be scared of Saturn if you've been disciplined. Yeah? Saturn rewards hard work and effort. So if you've been putting in the hours this year, sorting yourself out, getting your life in order, yeah, it's, it's a reward. Um, 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 I mean, on the winter solstice, there, the moon is in Pisces. Oh, and conjunct Neptune, who is the ruler of Pisces. So Neptune is at home in his watery world because Neptune is god of the sea. He is going to be in Pisces for years to come, I think. I wrote it down somewhere, hold on. Till 2026. So this is not the start of the age of the Aquarius. This is the end of Pisces. This is really, really, really important. We're so obsessively focused on the start of the age of Aquarius, we're forgetting that actually, and this is very demanding, the age, the age, the end of the age of Pisces. And we're seeing it in the environment, in the environmental disasters around, particularly the sea. The biggest environmental disaster is the warming of the sea. When we talk about global warming, we're talking about the sea rather than the land, okay? So I feel that these next years of this decade of, which, of 2020 are absolutely critical. They are so crucial. We have to sort ourselves out. The good thing about the age of Aquarius is all about ideas. Ideas, 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 yeah? Aquarius is radical and kind of genius-like. I hate to say it, but actually Trump was quite an Aquarian president. He was radical and he has exactly that horrible Aquarian mindset where they have an idea they fixate on it, they think it's the absolute best, and they absolutely drown everybody else out in the process. So we've got to watch out for that. And as I was looking at the charts, and oh my God, I made so many notes, and I was trying to explain it, and it just, it's just like, it's epic. I'll post the pictures, yeah, of the charts, and then you can look and see. I did try and write neatly. It's really, really interesting. A lot of stuff coming up about Brexit kind of things. The leadership definitely, the sun is being, the sun is, the, in mundane astrology, the sun is the leader and the moon are the people, yeah? And the moon is going to eclipse, the people are going to eclipse the leadership. What's also really interesting of uh, the chart of uh, today, right now as I'm speaking, is that as the full moon happens, the lowest point in the sky, yeah? So did I tell you that the highest point in the sky is in Aquarius? So it's, it's very much like a herald, which means the lowest point in the sky is in its opposite sign of Leo, yeah? And Leo is ruled by the sun and the sun is being eclipsed. So I think, and this is all London, this is a London chart, so I really think Boris is gonna, is something, Boris is gonna be at the lowest of the low, for some, for some reason, yeah? 
kind of freaky shit, it's all happening. The Capricorn Stellium is in the eighth house. I've drawn up a Placidus chart. It would be in the seventh house if this was uh, an equal or a whole house chart. But I thought it was interesting how it's all piled up in the eighth house. House of transformation, yeah? But in mundane astrology, it's about national, uh, national debt, mortality rates, and social security which I thought was really interesting. Masses of aspects going on between the planets up here. Uranus, Mars, Chiron and Neptune. Yeah, plugging into here and plugging into the new moon, which is down here in the sixth, which is about the health of the nation. Um, yeah, and we've got Venus out here on her own. Not, not as she's aspected. But there's a really interesting aspect between Venus and Chiron and the midpoint is that Capricorn stellium. I think that's a really positive aspect, Venus and Chiron together. Venus being really love and care and Chiron being healer. Yeah, maverick. There's a maverick, so much maverick energy about. Aquarius is very maverick as well. But it's going to go very much into like, like this decade we are going to see advances in technology that we cannot comprehend. Things are going to massively, massively speed up. Um, a, so a lot to do with Uranus, because Uranus co-rules Aquarius with Saturn. Uh, so you've always got to be looking at what Uranus is doing. Uranus is in Taurus at the moment. Um, which Taurus is a lot to do with money, it's matter, it's senses, it's the body. I was thinking, you know, Uranus is shocking, it's rebellious, it turns things around, it turns things upside down and inside out and just blows things up because it wants to reinvent, yeah? So changes, it's just changes, changes, changes. But have the faith because we're always, we've got it within us. <clears throat> we've got the ideas within us. And I think for the next 200 years, because all these, now these jupiter saturn conjunctures are gonna happen in air signs. It's really, <clears throat> I mean, it's very mental energy, but it's a very kind of different mental energy than we're going to, than we're used to. So, best you can, yeah, keep your nervous system strong. But particularly, I was thinking that Aquarius, the problem with Aquarius is they disconnect from their hearts. And Aquarius' opposite sign is Leo, and we always need something that our opposite sign has. And Leo is the heart. It's warm, it's generous, yeah. Aquarius is quite cold and detached. So, we're seeing this, you know, right now. We've been detached all years. So this is not like, oh, the start of something new. We've been building into this. You know, it started, you know, mass popular culture, the age of Aquarius started in the 60s with the hippies and it was so naive and beautiful because Aquarius is a humanitarian. And it's just so true. It, it comes back to the very simple things. It's really now more than ever we have to be thinking about humanity as, uh, we have to be thinking about humanity, all of humanity when we're making our decisions. We can't just be thinking about ourselves all the time. And we have to factor in other people. Other people have very, very different needs. But that's the paradox. We're all so much the same, yet we're also very, very different. And we can't be sleepwalking into this anymore. No, 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 not at all. We see everything now. Uranus rules the sky. So we have this perspective through the birth of the internet. You know, that was another great big new Aquarian thing when people started talking about this, this shift in the early 90s. And then, of course, we had, two, two, you know, 11, 11, 11, 2011. Then we had 2012 with all the Mayan stuff. You know, this has is, this is been happening and is, yeah, intensifying and will continue to roll on. 
Yeah, particularly, hold on, hold on. So we've got to look, so Jupiter moves quite quickly, so it'll be in Aquarius for a year or so. Saturn moves more slowly, it'll be in Aquarius for a good two, three years, yeah? But we've got Pluto still rumbling through the end of Capricorn. I've written it down. 2024, the beginning of 2024, Pluto will be fully in Aquarius, yeah? Pluto can be brutal, oh my goodness. In Capricorn, yeah, the patriarchy, the banks, the, finance, the institutions, we've seen them crumble with financial disaster after financial disaster. You know, like Uranus is still in Taurus, so don't expect that to end anytime soon because Uranus is still in Taurus for some time still, years, years, another four or five years. Um, so, take a breath. So, the last big planet that I want to talk about is Neptune. Because Neptune is at home at the moment in his own sign of Pisces. And he is at home until January 2026. So, these next six years... I think we'll feel the, the end of the age of Pisces also very acutely, as well as a lot of very Aquarian energy. So there's something that needs to be resolved, and I think it's particularly to do with the sea. The biggest environmental disaster we have to hand at the moment is the warming of the seas. When they talk about global warming, they're talking about actually more the sea than they are the land. Yeah, the seas are heating up, and that is a disaster. Um, Yes, it could be extremely disastrous. Apparently a fifth of the world's population make money from the coastline. They make their livelihoods through the coastline. A fifth of the world's population. So they are very, very much at risk. Um, but that's not <clears throat> the end of Pisces because in a long distant future, Pisces, uh, Pluto uh, enters Pisces. So it's going to spend 20 years in Aquarius from something like 2024 to 2044. We're going to have Pluto in Aquarius. So that will be really interesting. Really, really interesting. So Pluto is super trans transformative. So yeah, change, change, change. And no, it's not easy for humans to embrace change, but if we can kind of go with the flow of it, be open-minded, yeah? And also remember that we are human, we come from the earth and grounded and spend a lot of time in nature, stay connected to our heart, yeah? Remember what I was saying about being connected to your heart, do things every day for your heart, that's so, so important. Feeding your, your, your soul with spirit, that's so, so important. Yeah, so that we don't just disappear up into the mind. That could be a huge problem. Yeah, We go so up here and get even more engaged in the mind that we forget that we, we're here to experience also the, the wonders of the heart. Yeah, so really, really interesting. Really, really interesting. I think we're going to have quite a rough entry into 2021, personally speaking. Um, there is a Uranus. This is interesting. Uranus will square Saturn. So they are co-rulers of Aquarius and they're going to be in a square to each other. Okay. This is not comfortable. Just saying. And they move quite slowly, so it's going to kind of affect the first like three, four months of 2021. It's going to be a bit harsh, I think. Um, Uranus is a good story I like with the Greek myths, yeah? Uranus was the god of the sky in the very early, early Greek myths. And he used to come down every night and lay with Gaia, Earth. And they had children together. And... Um, they were kind of quite revolting, actually, the offspring of Uranus and Gaia. Um, and basically, he kept killing his children or trying to poke them back down into the earth. And Saturn was his son, and Gaia didn't like how Uranus was treating his children. So she asked the son to chop off his dad's balls 
um, which Saturn being responsible yeah, did. And he chopped off his dad's balls and he threw them into the sea. Yeah? And what came out of the sea, what rose out of the sea in response was the three furies. Mm, yes. The three furies were the goddesses of jealous rage, vengeful destruction and endless retribution. Yeah, they particularly uh, punished men. I am reading this as the patriarchy for crimes against the natural order. So this is really interesting. Yeah, I think there will be, with this eclipse that's coming, with the moon eclipsing the sun, I think there'll be a, ri a rising up. I think there'll be a rebellion. I think there'll be a rebellion. <laughs> Either that or I've been joking that there'll be an alien invasion. Because, like, to top it off, like, what could top off the end of 2020? Yeah. Oh, yeah, great. Alien invasion. Because uh, uh, Aquarius is also, like, that would be very alien as well. Very Aquarian thing. But I don't know. I mean, I do think they're probably on their way, the aliens. But we'll see. <laughs> but, um, yeah, did I say? So we're not going to see the end. I don't think we're going to see... I, I, I ran a workshop once a couple of years ago on the age of Aquarius and I look, look, look. Yeah, so the age of Aquarius is when you can see the stars on the eastern horizon of the spring equinox. So if you go down to the equator and up really high, yeah, so somewhere like Ecuador, yeah, Quito. So I set it for Quito and did, did the cast the chart and I think it was about the year 2064, yeah you could actually see, or, you know, according to the chart, that's when the stars of Aquarius would be rising, yeah, you know, on the horizon at sunup on the spring equinox. So that's the age of Aquarius. But remember, it's also very much about the end of Pisces. Pisces, let's, is the very much the energy of Jesus. Um which is also very much the energy of Waheguru. It's, if I think of Jesus now, I think of forgiveness. So I think if there's anything that you want to let go of during this eclipse season or any time, do you know, the, the, some of the most powerful work I've done has been forgiveness. It's really shifted things for me. It means to go forth. To go forth. So to forgive um but that's piscean and tonight is the sagittarian new moon so we're gonna have a party gonna have a party in my facebook group um and then i am going to appear again i'm gonna have hopefully two channels and i will be offering classes on zoom come the winter solstice so have a look around. There'll be a link somewhere. I am offering pay what you can afford kundalini classes to take you right up to the end of this year. Because to top off the end of this year, we've got the Cancer full moon on the 30th. So that class is going to be in the morning, 9 till 10.30. And I think it's going to be a really emotional send off to 2020. We'll do something really, really beautiful. Um, there will also be hour-long classes, uh, I don't have the dates on me, the 22nd, the 23rd and the 24th and then again on the 29th, uh, the 30th will be an extended class, the 31st and New Year's Day which is a Friday, yeah, we'll have a special class on New Year's Day as well, a longer class, an hour and a half, so loads and loads of yoga for you at a pay what you can afford price because I recognize that people are in vastly different circumstances. So some people making loads of money, yeah. <laughs> For however many classes there are, four, three, four extended classes and I think six uh, hour long classes, that's a lot of yoga. Give me some of your money, please. You know, I've got a lot of rent to pay and a teenage son to bring up. But if you're really skint, don't worry about it. Just if you can give, yeah, give some money because it's good to have an exchange. You will value it more. It's just how it is. 
if you have absolutely no money, like you're on the streets, you're absolutely destitute, you're a refugee or whatever, you're just drop me an email, yeah, and I'll sort you out, no problem. Okay? I want my my name is Kieran Jot and I'm really on a mission to make Kundalini Yoga accessible, yeah, regardless of time or money. It is such a fantastic and heartwarming and soul lifting and inspiring and deeply deeply healing practice i just want you know you to experience it and and feel for yourself um how great you can feel and when you feel great you can really change the world it's just how it is yeah so we have one or probably thousands actually of lives but we do have this one precious moment together so join me for some yoga please 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 if you watch this far go and find the links and come and join me for some yoga it'll be on my website that if you use facebook it'll be on facebook if not it will be some kind of community platform thing that i'm going to set up okay uh which you'll access via a zoom so a zoom link so that's how it's all working at HQ. I hope you're okay. Sending so much love to you. Um, yeah, God bless you all. Uh, God bless us all. God bless Mother Earth. Yeah, let's keep you learning. Let's keep growing. Let's keep trying our best. Let's keep showing up. Let's keep being truthful. Let's be keeping on keeping kind. Yeah, let's keep on looking after one another. Yeah, wishing you all the best and a very Merry Christmas if you're celebrating and a Happy New Year. <laughs> Sanam.